Hey everybody, this is Trish and Adrian behind the camera, and this is the Purple Painted Lady. I'm just going to give you a quick, real quick thing about wax. I'm using clear wax. Um, what I always like to tell people is if you're going to put some wax onto your paper plate, because you don't want to put your wax brush right into the container, you can contaminate it if you get residual paint um, from the piece that you're waxing. So I always tell people to keep plastic spoons and paper plates on hand and use the back side of the spoon. That way it's not like peanut butter where you get your finger dirty. Um, just take a good dollop of it out and put it right on the plate. And then to get some wax on your brush, because we want the, the wax to be applied very thin, you only want the wax on the tips. You shouldn't have it caking up the sides. And if you do, you probably have too much wax on your brush. So you can see how much wax I have. Okay, and now I'm going to move over to the furniture piece here. This is a really pretty, um, just a tall dresser we did some decorative painting on. It's one of the things we really love to do at the Purple Painted Lady. It's painted with um, two coats of Louis Blue, did some decorative painting, and now we're applying a first coat of clear wax. And when you apply clear wax, um, depending on the piece you're doing, you may put it on. Typically, I do it like in a circular motion, and I'm very strategic. I work in one area, and when my wax starts to sort of um, disappear from my brush, you can see it getting very thin. I know at that point that I want to rub the wax in. And then when I'm done with that, I'll go ahead and get more wax like I just did. So I already did the top row here of the dresser. I did this top drawer. I'm now going to be focusing on the split right here in the second drawer. So since I have a lot of wax on my brush, I don't want to put it in an area where there's a lot of crevices and grooves because then it's going to build up there and creates more work. So I'm going to take my brush. I'm just going to set it down in a solid area, and I'm going to go ahead and just apply the wax. I'm not sure if the camera can pick up on it. The wax doesn't change the color of the paint, but it intensifies it a bit. And if you um, are able to see that, you would notice that this side is a little bit deeper in intensity than this side, and that's because this is where I just applied the wax. At this point, using a rag or a piece of cheesecloth, I'm just going to go ahead, and I'm not buffing it, but I'm definitely pushing the wax in, and I'm removing the residual wax, okay? It's like hair conditioner. Put it on your hair, and then what do you do? You wash it all off, but your hair absorbed the amount of conditioner it needed. And the same applies for wax on paint. Once I've rubbed it in, I can run my finger across it. There's no ridge. It's nice and thin. This is done. What I would do next is I would actually go and get ahead, go ahead and get more wax. I would go over a little bit, apply the wax, overlapping the last area I did just a smidge. Once I have this whole drawer done, I'll move down. So I'm very strategic and I'm aware where I put the wax. Lightly rubbing it in and um, getting rid of any residual. At this point, we want the wax to dry. And once the wax is dried, we can come back and we can actually buff it if we want. Um, or rub it lightly and go ahead and apply a second coat of wax, depending upon what you're doing. Um, I say them a lot. I think, for the most part, that answers, hopefully, what I wanted to share about wax. And if you have any questions, go to the Purple Painted Lady website or Facebook page.